Oh, it's telling me to hang on. We're telling folks to to log on. Sounds good. All right, hey everyone. My name is Ian Williams. I'm the author of Reproduction, uh, which won last year's or this year's uh, Giller Prize, 2019 uh, Giller Prize, in a field of really great writers like Alex Olin, Stephen Price, Megan Gale Coles, David Best Mosgis, and Michael Crummy. So thanks for joining us here. Glad you are, uh, glad we're together at a distance somehow. So if you've got questions or comments or thoughts, just post them, type them here, and I'll respond to them in turn. I'm going to read a little bit uh, today. It's only going to be 15 minutes. Glad you like the shirt. Thanks, Kiss Machine. Um, I'm trying to cover the pink flamingo here. but um, So I'll read for a few minutes, and then we can sort of chat and talk if you like. Um, so reproduction is this, it's a 40-year love story. Uh, about a man and a woman who meet under tragic circumstances in a hospital. It's not quite a pandemic, um, but the first part of the novel takes place in a hospital as they're trying to um, uh, come to terms with their their ill mothers. And so they bond very quickly and they move in and out of each other's lives over a number of years. And I, it's hard to summarize a novel. Uh, it really depends on which character you ask. Uh, so if you ask, uh, Edgar, it's probably a novel about doing as little as possible with your life and still trying to get by. If you ask Felicia, it's about being a good daughter and then being a good mother um, and then dealing with a difficult father. If you ask Oliver, it's about healing after a divorce. If you ask Heather, it's about boys and I think maybe the process of becoming woke uh, eventually. Um, who else? Army, it's about making money. So it depends on who you ask, right? Uh, the novel changes uh, its aboutness. So uh, I thought it would be a good idea uh, to read very, very tiny stories and tiny excerpts, tiny pieces of things uh, for you. And uh, <laughs> then we'll chat. There's not a lot of love for Edgar, uh, says Laura. Uh, so the kinds of books that I've been reading uh, lately, I'm actually reading Zadie Smith, but uh, I'm sort of dipping in it of, out of Lydia Davis's Can't and Won't, Can't and Won't. And so I'll read a couple of stories from here uh, to start us off. This one's called Housekeeping Observation. Under all this dirt, the floor is really very clean. That's the whole story there. Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> it's like this big. An entire story. Second one. Short conversation in airport departure lounge. Is that a new sweater? One woman asks another, a stranger sitting next to her. The other woman says, it is not. There is no further conversation. I love how Lydia Davis can like create a whole world in just, you know, three sentences or so. These very, very tiny things. Okay, one more, slightly meatier story, okay? Maybe those are a bit too cute. Here's a bigger story. It's called The Dog Hair. The dog is gone. We miss him. When the doorbell rings, no one barks. When we come home late, there's no one waiting for us. We still find his white hairs here and there around the house and on our clothes. We pick them up. We should, tro we should throw them away but they are all we have left of him. We don't throw them away. We have a wild hope. If only we connect enough of them, if only we collect a lot, enough of them, we will be able to put the dog back together again. Oh. All right, I see a bunch of people have logged on here. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> see all these waves here. So maybe a couple of tiny things from reproduction. And then uh, if you've got questions, just post them. You might have to repost them. I don't think I can scroll back. Oh, I totally can scroll back if I missed questions. Great. So let's see. Tiny story from reproduction. Oh, how about this? 212, story from a hospital. 
Can you imagine how difficult it would be these days to have a baby? <laughs> uh, to be in a hospital under these conditions? Um, and the baby, like, knows... The baby can't, like, delay another month, right? Well, well uh, things are closed down. Um, yeah, what do you find these... Sh Oxygen Milkshake asks, what do you find these shorter stories accomplish emotionally in contrast to longer stories such as yours? I think, like, shorter stories leave so much more room for the imagination, right? All you have is a sentence, but pretty much you can imagine the rest. So here's an example, okay? Reproduction, the third section of reproduction, has these 256 really, really tiny sections. And um, they're sometimes a paragraph long, sometimes a sentence long. But here's one. Uh, it's from Edgar's point of view, and it's called Seduction. Number 181, Seduction. He had one move. That's a whole section, right? And you can now sort of, the reader can rush in and say, oh, what's the one move that a man has as he's trying to seduce people? And for Edgar, it's this simple, he does this, takes his thumb and presses it into a woman's head and does this little massage thing. And that's his one seduction move. But, um, you can imagine others. Let's read another one. Here's a, another one of those tiny stories. And these tiny stories all add up into a big sort of grander story, right? So they're not so isolated. This is number 212. Oh, someone's pregnant and due in July. Ooh, can you say more about that? Like, yeah, by July, we don't know, right? What, what things are going to happen, but... All right, here's a story in a hospital. It's called Epidural, 212. Number 212 of Reproduction, Part 3. Epidural, Felicia's point of view. You have to hold still, Felicia said. You don't want the needle to break in your spine. Horror on Heather's face. Was it needle, spine, or break? A very sensitive generation, this one. It's not too late to change your mind, Felicia said. Heather had rejected her earlier advice, but Felicia gave it one more shot. Pain was ordained since Eden. I wouldn't take no epidural if I was you. She knew of someone from her village in the small, unrecognized island who went abroad and took an epidural, and the odds were one in 10,000 that she would be paralyzed, and she was the one. I mean, in a tiny section like that, you see the cast of like Felicia's mind, right? So bent on the horrific. Um, yeah, you get a good sense of her from, from that little horrible, horrible story. Maybe one little bit more, 226. Two twenty six. This one's called Pink Disposable Razors. She hadn't shaved her legs because it was difficult bending around the baby belly, and also because it was winter. She was conscious of hair on her legs as she prepared to be inspected by a man who could be her father. All right, let's see. Oh. All appointments will go on as scheduled, but of course, some of the fun that comes with pregnancy and this being my first can happen, baby shower, etc. Yeah, the whole birth time is going to be defined by our corona moment. Um, any questions, any thoughts that you have? Oh, it's great to see people like this, right? Like just these little flashes of people's lives uh, scrolling along the screen. Let me shift the camera a little bit here. There we go. Hmm. So any thoughts, any questions that you have? The Bibliotherapist. What are some of the best books you've read this year? Oh, let's see. Oh, what have I read? I think I finished Alex Olean's book earlier this year, Dual Citizens. I'm just looking behind me. Um, oh, Mary Oliver's Upstream I finished recent. well, a little bit ago. I have to look at my coffee table to see what I've read recently. Oh, I finished this a couple of days ago. Donald Berthel, Paradise. 
Uh, a bit hard to recommend in good confidence. It's a bit of like a male fantasy from the 90s or so. But I, I finished it. I'm enjoying this book right now. I'm about that much in, if you can see. So, Zadie Smith's Swing Time, going well. So those are the things that I'm, I'm enjoying reading during uh, Corona time. When was the last time you wrote and mailed a letter, and who was it to? <laughs> oh, oh, that makes me feel all tender. <laughs> that makes me feel very tender, that question. Um, can you ask me that privately? <laughs> ask me that privately, but I probably owe another letter, although it seems unnecessary at this point. Thanks for the compliment on the t-shirt there. What am I working on this year, Alena asks. Um, so I'm working on uh, like nonfiction essays. I wrote a bunch of uh, essays in the last week. I'm still writing some. I've actually got them here. I can read you the end of one of these essays here. So it's just a couple of paragraphs. And this is a, an essay about Corona. The worst has happened to one of my single friends. He ran out of toilet paper. Gasp. I offered him some. Phew. He's a young, handsome, baller height black man. The combination of whose features might prick alertness in covert racists. Though he is, in fact, gentle with his large hands and soft-spoken to the point of being silent. When he came over to collect the toilet paper, he was dressed completely in black, but with white sneakers, a very fashionable look these days. He said, this is the first time I've seen someone in person in two weeks. Enjoy it, I said. I had laid out four rolls of toilet paper for him. He took two and hugged them to his chest. I could have bought more toilet paper when this all started, he said, but I wanted to leave some behind for other people. Uh, yeah, so I'm writing essays these days. Little sort of blasts of kindness and thoughtfulness um, about people. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about how this is bringing us, bringing out like self-protection and um, the tendency to hoard and all of that. But there are also these glimpses of like the best of human nature too that are hap that's happening now. All right, let's see what's going on. The letter question. You'll uh, DM me that one. <laughs> What were you thinking when you bought the Flamingo shirt? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> All right. I liked everything except the Flamingo, but I think I could slowly unravel the Flamingo like one thread at a time. Okay. What are you working on these days, Emily? Hey, I'll work a little bit later on some of those essays again. Still scrolling. Um, hey, Europa's here. My American publisher is here as well. Anything you want to share about uh, your experience in uh, social isolation? Folks are typing. Ooh. Here we go. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. We're back. All right. A few more minutes. I'm going to start to disappear into the background among these plants. What's in your fridge? <laughs> What's in my fridge? There's actually like decent cooked food in my fridge. My friends know that I'm not a very good eater or cook. But these days have been great. Hey, Tama Tenji's here. And her book is somewhere. Oh, I should just point to the books of the people who are alive with us. Where's your book, Taya? Mm. Anyway, I can't locate it. That's one of the books that I read. No, it was late last year. Hey, who are some of your favorite all-time authors? I feel like I'm sitting close to them. I don't hold... Uh, I don't hold books in mind too long or authors too long in, uh, too long in mind. 
um, pretty much the folks that I'm reading right now are folks that I'm currently excited about, right? And then I sort of move, move on. It's on the left. It's on the second shelf left. Can she spot her book like that? Second shelf. All right, I'm gonna trust her. I still can't see it. See it. <laughs> How are you so stylish? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I feel like the shirt's getting a lot of attention here. If you didn't teach, what would you do? Write full time? Probably. Yeah, I would like writing full time. Um, yeah, the teaching, I mean, hmm. Yeah, it's not something I'm trying to escape from my life, right? Like I do kind of like the balance of teaching and writing currently. Um, maybe that'll shift in future years or what what have you. But um, like my grad students right now are just so smart and um, like writing good things and improving like by the week. And like, I wouldn't see that if I weren't in an institution teaching, so. All right, that shirt, there we go again. <laughs> Um, what was the most surprising thing you learned in the process of publishing a book? Uh, well, for a novel, uh, just, I think it's easy to underestimate how difficult it is. You know, like when people sit next to you on the airplane and they say things like, um, yeah, I'm going to write a book. And you're like, yeah, power to you, go ahead. Um, it's really very, very, very difficult uh, to do. So to underestimate the time that it takes, every year I thought I would complete it and I, um, it always took longer, right? So right now I'm writing things and um, I've got a more realistic sense of, of how long uh, projects take for me. Which window in your home has the best view? Kindly describe. Uh, right now there's a view of a gas station outside and the price of gas in Vancouver is 104.9. So uh, what else do we have? Vancouver versus Brampton. Oh, that's not, that's not cool. <laughs> that is not cool. What's the weather like in Brampton right now? In Vancouver, it's like big fluffy clouds and blue sky. And it looks pretty mild, so hard to beat that at the moment. What's your favorite song to lighten the mood these days? Huh. That's a good one. Listen to a bit of Quartango recently. Um... Listen to like French cafe music, uh, just kind of Spotify playlist. So that's that. All right. I think we are just at about time. Any last minute questions in the last 30 seconds or one minute or so? I guess I should have asked you questions. Like, do you find that you're reading more in all of this? And I hope so. And I hope that uh, the independent bookstores are doing well as, um, through all of this as well. What's your writing routine these days? Hmm. I don't know. It's like do a core workout, eat, and then write, 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 do another workout. And that's that. Hey, Anise, I see you too. All right. Thanks, everyone. I guess we should probably stop now. It's 15 minutes in. Um, first time doing this. And I think maybe we should do this again uh, at some point. Thanks to the Giller folks for thinking of it. And I guess another author will be on uh, tomorrow or the next day or, or, or so. So take good care. Thanks, everyone, for, for the kindness. I hope you're well and healthy and that people are being good to you and you're being good to people as well. All my best. Bye.